Hello, this is the third of our take-home assessment exercises in which we will be doing an experiment to study uh, the entry behavior of a sphere into water. So, um, we will be studying this topic because it's a very complex one uh, using dimensional analysis because dimensional analysis can um, give us great insight into complex problems um, in um, a short period of time it is not straight it is not um, very complex but it requires um, a good base for analysis uh, so we've come across some of the dimensionless numbers like Reynolds number and Mach number and we will see some more today uh, and we will see how we can um, really implement um, a dimensional analysis to a and to a fluids engineering problem so here is our uh, experiment in our experiment we have a sphere uh, that we are going to drop from a certain height above the surface of the water into water and then watch what happens uh, as the sphere uh, enters the water um, for our experiment we want uh, to focus on um, buoyant spheres uh, so um, a buoyant sphere will not will not sink but would rather uh, rise just like you have seen in the first uh, take-home experiment um, so we want to deal with buoyant spheres because they have an, a very interesting behavior um, so uh, here I have a fruit that when I set in the water without even dropping it it will float um, other things you could look into your house um, even if you have a fruit that you can uh, cut into the shape of a sphere uh, be my guest do that an apple cut it into a small sphere large sphere the things that we can control would be its size its mass so we need some way of assessing the mass either through volume and density uh, or through a weighing scale and the thing that we will also control is the drop height and then we will watch what happens when we uh, vary uh, these things so some suggestions other than um, fruits and vegetables that you can cut into shape but they have to be to float um, I took the end of a candle and formed it into a sphere and you would like to at least have uh, four different objects that you want to experiment with and those so let's say you take a fruit you take the end of a candle you take whatever kind of bead you might have in your bead box uh, in your kitchen in your bedroom look around uh, you can even get a piece of wood and try and carve it into a sphere these are all perfect um, all perfect items to do as long as they can float um, so you would like to have a variety of sizes masses uh, densities so you'll have let's say four different sizes of a lemon or um, a lemon and a cucumber that's that's cut into a into a sphere uh, so you get the idea so you'll have four objects that you will experiment with and the experiment the primary once we have those set the primary parameter that we will control is the drop height so we want to uh, drop it from various heights and then take videos and then analyze those videos so let's see what happens when um, when we drop this fruit so you've probably seen this before but today we will be analyzing it in a little bit more detail and try to understand this complex uh, behavior so you see the we drop the um, the sphere 
it penetra it pen it accelerates as it goes down through the air. Uh, we're assuming the air is frictionless, so it gets to a terminal velocity, and then as it goes through the water, it starts decelerating until it hits. Uh, so I hope uh, that it didn't hit the bottom, otherwise that would be too high. So you really don't want it to hit the bottom, but because it's buoyant, so I don't, I feel this was, um, that it didn't hit the bottom, but if it did, that would be, that wouldn't be a very well conducted experiment. Uh, so it'll hit a, it'll hit a maximum depth and then buoyancy will take it up to, uh, the surface and then that ends our experiment. So this is what we will be studying. Uh, be, we will be studying this behavior today. Uh, so make sure you have at least four items uh, that you will experiment with. So maybe four sizes, um, densities, and so on. And then the variable that we want to, to do is maybe change five different heights. Uh, so we'll have 20 different experiments to, um, to analyze. So let's look at the details of what goes on. You, um, if you go back and watch that video, you'll see after the moment. So we release the we release the board or the sphere. Uh, it accelerates and now it reaches the surface of the water. And this is where the interesting things start happening. So here is the point of impact. So that's our t equals zero, uh, where will be our it will be our reference to. Uh, analyze this problem. So this is our time t equals zero. And what you'd see here is some kind of crown shaped splash um, as the sphere enters the water. But the interesting thing that we want to also look at here is the following. As you see, as the water, as the sphere dives into the water, it takes with it, in fact, it leaves a void. Um, so the sphere dives down under its own momentum. It pushes the liquid out momentarily. We're, we're talking uh, tens of milliseconds. So it leaves a void and that void is now filled with air. Air can move much faster um, than water. So it, it fills the void uh, that's over here. So we get what's called a cavity. And then the water that has been pushed uh, to the side will now uh, come back. So it comes back and tries to close this void or this cavity. So the cavity will pinch off. So you'll see it will have this shape, sort of conical shape or some kind of uh, shape that terminates here that closes uh, at the end. Um, so that's the pinch off uh, phase. And then the sphere keeps going down. And at the same time as it's going down, as the, well, let's look at the cavity, let's, and then the sphere goes down. But let's look at the cavity. And as the cavity closes, the fluid comes in with a momentum. So you'll see that momentum combined with the geometry uh, this angulated geometry of the cavity will push the liquid up in this jet. So that's the so we're interested in this experiment and understanding the behavior of this cavity as well as the behavior of this jet. So let's call it cavity and um, we have a jet here. Um, and the jet reaches, so the jet grows, reaches a maximum height, and then under the effect of gravity, it's just pulled down. While at the same time, the lemon, here I have a lemon, it's a sphere. Uh, the sphere keeps going down, hits a maximum depth, and then under buoyancy, it rises up again. So all these things are happening at the same time, and eventually it gets to uh, the surface of the water and everything is in equilibrium one more time. And uh, as you have seen in the paper that I've shared with you on Moodle, and I will 
uh, have a screenshot of at the end of this um, this presentation. Um, this problem is of interest to um, many engineering as well as um, natural uh, science applications uh, and even biological sciences uh, applications you know um, dolphins jumping out and jumping into the water um, uh, the great whales jumping out of the water and splashing in. So the splash phenomena is, um, as well as ships and uh, boats uh, jumping up and down on the surface of the water. Uh, but we're going to consider this simple experiment uh, that is simple in, in, in the way that we're going to conduct, but it's actually very complex and very rich in the level of physics and uh, particularly fluid mechanics that it contains. So let's talk about fluid mechanics. Um, we can control, as I said in the previous slide, the sphere size, its mass, drop height, the density of the sphere, so that is its material. So you want to get the best estimate of your size, even though you are not perfectly spherical. Try and get an average diameter. So here um, I have a fruit and it's not perfectly spherical. So you could get the long diameter and the short diameter and get some average uh, number. And for the mass, you get a volume and somehow try and estimate a density, either Googling it. So we're engineers, we should be able to, um, to do that. And a drop height, that's easy to get. All you need is a um, measuring tape. So, uh, this is, um, here, are some, here are some of the parameters. The initial height, L0, is a control parameter that we can, uh, we can manage, and that's the one that we want to, um, to play with, uh, with our four uh, entry objects. Then the sphere, after it drops into the water, it will dive into a maximum depth L, penetration length. The sphere has a diameter d mass m and density rho s, while the liquid has a viscosity mu and a density rho. Okay, so let's talk about the analysis. So once you release the sphere under the effect of gravity, which is its weight, it's um, assuming no air friction. Uh, every second, it's going to gain 9.8 meters per second. So that's what the G is. So by the time it gets through the whole distance L0, it will get to a speed of square root of 2GH or 2GL0. So that's the impact speed. That's our, that's our velocity scale in this problem, remember? So if you haven't looked at the um, lectures of chapter five, stop here and go watch those um, lectures because uh, you're going to miss a lot um, in this experiment and many things will be ambiguous, ambiguous for you if you have not uh, watched that. So stop here and go watch um, those three, two, three or four videos. Right, so that's our velocity scale. Um, the diameter of the ball would be our uh, length scale. Um, and as you have seen in, in previous, uh, in those lectures that I just mentioned. So now the ball has gotten to the water surface at a speed of 2GL0 uh, square root. And now the impact happens. And as the sphere is in touch with the water, um, a number of the water will start resisting through buoyancy. So the sphere is being pulled down under its own weight, but the water is pushing it up uh, with uh, buoyancy. 
as well as friction because the ball has a sphere and under those two forces the sphere will decelerate from a velocity u0 all the way down to a velocity of zero before it comes uh, before it comes out so we are also interested in this uh, acceleration over here uh, so here is a force balance you have those two forces buoyancy that depends on the density of the liquid and weight that depends on the density of the material of the sphere and if we do a force balance you have weight minus buoyancy minus the friction uh, will be equal to the mass of the sphere times its acceleration and the mass of the sphere is just its density times volume and then we want to use some scaling argument the weight of the ball uh, mg scales with uh, its density uh, g and its volume the volume scales with the diameter uh, with the diameter cubed or the length scale cubed so that's our length scale that we talked about um, initially over here uh, same thing with buoyancy it's the same scaling except it's the density of the fluid uh, then we have uh, the drag force uh, that scales with the u0 d squared and uh, lastly, we have the inertia. The inertia is just mass times acceleration. And this acceleration um, is just um, a velocity over time. And the time we get it, it's the time it takes for the sphere to move one length scale. So if this distance is d, u0 so d over u0 is the time time scale and then my velocity over time so this is my velocity over uh, time scale so um right so d over u0 is the time so and then i get uh velocity over time so u0 over d over u0 so i get u0 squared and then multiply that by the mass, so I get the inertial force. Um, the mass scales with the density of the sphere and the diameter cubed. So the diameter cubed with this diameter becomes diameter squared. So my inertial force scales with u0 d squared. And now let's, let's get ratios. So now these are the effects. We have weight, we have buoyancy, we have uh, the friction of the water as well as the inertial forces of uh, the water. In fact, if I'm talking about the water, this density would actually be the density of uh, the water. If I'm talking about, but since I'm doing these scaling arguments for the fluid, uh, it's more appropriate to have this as the density of the fluid. So let's just remove the S from this guy. So now I talk about the relative effects, which one is just like we have seen in Reynolds number, Reynolds number, measures the effect of this again here's where you need you really need to go back and watch those video lectures on chapter five uh, when we talked about reynolds number we said it was a ratio of the effect of inertia to viscosity in the limit that inertia is very large we we get to the potential flow theory and in the limit that inertia is very small or viscosity is very large reynolds number is very small uh, then viscosity is very uh, where viscosity the viscous effect is dominant and this gives rise to a class of problems called creeping flows lubrication flows um, stokes type of flow so let's look at these relative effects i have uh, weight buoyancy friction and inertia so let's look at uh, as we said the rel relative uh, effect. So the relative effect of weight over buoyancy uh, scales with the density ratio between the fluid and between the sphere that you have. That's obvious. Then if I do inertia over viscosity, uh, as we've seen, this is my inertia divided by the viscous, um, uh, the viscous force. The viscous force is um, mu u0 times d, as you have seen in chapter 5. And that gives us the Reynolds number. 
So we got a dimensionless number, which is the density ratio that is important in this problem. And we got a dimensionless number now that's the Reynolds number that we feel is important just by looking at a basic equation of motion and then doing scaling, um, a scale, um, fusing it with, with scales to get a sc scaling argument. And then, so we've done weight with buoyancy, inertia with viscosity, weight with inertia. Uh, so the weight is the density of the sphere, GD cubed. And with inertia, um, uh, we get, uh, so here I'm doing the weight of the sphere and the inertia of the sphere. So I'm, I'm using still the, iner the density of the sphere. Uh, so I get a dimensionless number gd over uh, u0 square so that's u0 square and that is my food number and it's a very important number in this type of problems in all types of problems that have um, uh, free surfaces where gravity is important so one two three dimensionless number and the fourth one is the drag force over this drag force over the inertial force, and that gives me the drag coefficient that we're also familiar with from the information in chapter five. Okay, so these are our four important parameters that we're interested in. There are other, um, other dimensionless numbers in similar problems like when uh, surface tension is important. So surface tension is can be important in, in um, spheres that are very small. We're going to ignore it here. Uh, in problems that um, the pressure of the gas is also variable, uh, is all, we have another dimensionless number. So we're not going to consider this. Let's keep our problem as complex as it is. Um, keep it to to these four variables or these four control factors, control dimensionless numbers that uh, we have. And let's not um, expand further on. So our goal is to use this type of dimensionless analysis, these dimensionless numbers, to with u zero as we have defined it before. Uh, to understand the entry behavior. And that entry behavior, as you have seen, as the ball enters, it carries with it, it creates a void that gets filled with gas. The, uh, the void uh, comes from the pushing of the liquid to the side. Uh, and then the liquid is pushed to the side, then it recoils. So I have a cavity and then uh, that cavity closes so it pinches off at the end over here while the ball uh, keeps moving down so when the gas cavity and the sphere separate from each other as you have seen in the video that would be the pinch off process um, and now we want to analyze so now we have taken a video and we've Right, we have taken a video uh, and we want to play it frame by frame. So we want to measure the time uh, from impact. So our, um, our T0 would be when we have impact. So this is T equals zero. And we will, this is our time base. And from this point on, our time clock or our clock starts uh, clicking. And that's where we want to do our measurements relative to. So everyone uses this as our um, base time, time t equals zero. So the pinch of time is the time from the impact point all the way until the sphere and the cavity uh, separate from each other. So that's this time. So you do, so we'll talk about how we can get this time almost exactly in the next slides. And we also want this distance, the distance 
the vertical distance from the free surface um, to the pinch off. Uh, so that's Z pinch off to the point of pinch off. So that's the depth of the pinch off point. Um, then the other item is the L that we want to measure here. We're calling it Z zero, the sphere maximum depth, because here the sphere got to its maximum depth and then it starts rising again. And as we have seen uh, before, as the cavity starts closing in and due to its sort of conical geometry, it pushes the water upward in a form of a jet. So we want to measure how high uh, this jet is. It's a different height, so we are calling it Z jet. It's not the same as L0. Um, so we want to get that maximum height of the jet. We want to measure the volume of the jet. Uh, so this volume, how much liquid um, is, out, is out there in, the, in this jet. And we want to measure it from the free surface at the point of maximum uh, jetting. And also we want to know what is the time from t equals zero that the jet gets to its maximum height. So this is how what we mean by understanding the entry behavior. How do these parameters vary when we vary our sphere diameter? What you see from now on, we're not talking about, we're not going to be talking about sphere diameter, mass, density, and so on. We're going to talk about density ratios, Reynolds number, fruit number, and CD. And in particular, we want to pay special attention to fruit number. Um, so again, some of them are missing the U0, so let's use 0 here. Right, so these are, this is what we want to measure in our experiment. Um, and here is a summary of what we talked about. This is time t equals 0, is the time where the, where the sphere touches the, the liquid of liquid surface. And then we have cavity formation. So you'll see there is a gap. And then here, we're, this is almost not yet pinched off. Um, this is where this is, we're getting very close. So the cavity is definitely closing from this shape all the way to this shape. So the cavity is closing, but it hasn't completely pinched off. Um, so it's, but it's very close to pinching off. The, so the gas pocket is separating from the sphere. Uh, then uh, the sphere continues down. It gets to its maximum depth. That's where you get your maximum depth. And while at the same time, um, you have your jet formation. And we want to get, so here I've zoomed on it a little bit more. We want to get the maximum height of this jet. You see, it's not uh, exact science uh, the jet can look a little bit ugly as it looks here. What is the maximum jet? So try, we want to approximate it. Um, I want you to exercise your best judgment. And if you, feel, if you feel that this is an issue, discuss it when you're writing your report. So this is the maximum jet height. And this is the, we want to estimate this jet uh, volume uh, over here. Um, so that would be our jet volume and uh, jet height. So these are the items that we want to measure to analyze in the videos. So here is what um, what you want to do. So uh, you want to get your video camera. And how do we get these times? So to get these times, you want to get your video uh, camera, which is your phone camera. And some of today's, or all, almost all phones today have a slow mo, slow motion uh, mode. So you go into your uh, phone camera, go to the camera settings, and you will find this slow motion um, um, capability. And you can Google for your phone. Mine has a slow motion capability of 
60 frames per second and this is what these videos and I think this is um, this is a, an old phone so 60 frames per second is really slow but it's, it was good enough for this experiment um, the newer iPhones can go to a thousand frames per second and newer phones can easily get to the 240 frames per second many of them uh, many of my friends have those uh, and they're cheap phones so uh, go to slow-mo and then we want to define our t equals zero to be uh, when we touch the so we get we get our video and then it's all these times we get them in the analysis and in that analysis we want to play the so you download your you download um, the video into your computer and use real player or whatever uh, QuickTime to uh, play it and you want to play it frame by frame. So then you want to count frames if my camera is going at 60 frames per second so between every uh, between every two frames the time is 0 0.0167 seconds and if you're going at if you have a much, if you have a better camera than I do so if you're going uh, 250 frames per second uh, then the time is going to be uh, so here I have 16 millisecond or 17 millisecond between every two frames you're going to get um, four milliseconds between your um, frames that's really good if you have 250 frames per second good for you uh, you're gonna get uh, really good uh, results uh, in this experiment so uh, that's how we get the timestamp so let me just um, show you how to do that so here is my video uh, let's play it once here I, it's recorded in slow-mo as you uh, can see and now what I want to do is I want to play it frame by frame so release a ball is falling I can even I can even confirm um, the impact velocity uh, if I get um, by measuring uh, the displacement of the ball between the different frames I can actually get a trace of the sphere velocity versus time because uh, between this frame and this frame is 0 0.0167 second and then another 0.167 second that's the 1 over 60 frame per second so here is my impact so my impact point is between this frame and this frame so I'm going to say it's somewhere here. Uh, so I'm going to say that t equals 0 is almost is between those two. So at this frame, I am uh, half a time step uh, from t equals 0. So let's count. I have half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13 so so 13 and a half right because we had a half at the beginning uh, between 12 and a half and 13 and a half the gas pocket has pinched off from the sphere so I'm gonna say that my pinch off time tau pinch off is uh, 12 and a half 13 and a half average those I'm gonna get 13 frames from the time of impact and then I get 13 frames, multiply it by the distance between two frames, I'm going to get the uh, pinch of time to be 0 0.867 uh, seconds. And then I also have now the uh, pinch of height from the uh, surface. What surface are we talking about? Uh, be consistent. So if you decide that you want to stick or stick with the undisturbed uh, surface so you draw a line here and then measure everything relative to the undisturbed surface uh, that's perfectly fine and that's pr that's more advisable because you don't see a free surface 
uh, the free surface is quite mushy over uh, over here. It's hard to, um, to get. So let's measure let's measure the z's relative to the undisturbed uh, free surface. So we get a pinch off, and then the sphere keeps going down, and it hits the bottom. If it actually hit the bottom of the tank, then that's not a very well conducted experiment. I should have some more liquid in it, or I should start with a, with a maximum height that is less than uh, what I have up here. So I will just start from probably uh, from somewhere here a little bit. So such that, and then that will, I, as, as we said, we wanted to have five different drop heights, and we also have four different objects to, uh, to play with. Um, so that's how you get the time analysis from, uh, from your video. And then everything uh, just goes to normalcy again. And then uh, you have the jet formation uh, that's right over here. And now let's look at how we want. So that's how you get the time. We get 0.867. And then for um, everything else, so you continue you, the time for maximum depth, the time for t jet equal max. So you really need to play this video frame, uh, frame by frame. Okay, so uh, how to get the uh, the volume of uh, we wanted the maximum jet volume as well as the maximum height. So we could uh, I'm suggesting don't follow my suggestion. If you have a better idea, uh, just write it down um, in your report. And I'm suggesting to that we do a simple cone uh, volume. Uh, to do it so you need some kind of scale so you when you're doing your experiment you want to have your ruler in there or you can put marks on the bottle so after you do your video you know that this distance is one centimeter on the bottle or two centimeters or whatever and from that you you um, you you scale your your uh, your measurements so you want to spend some time looking at videos right so now we have measured all these times for all the cases and now what do we do with them and uh, now uh, I've posted this paper uh, on Moodle because they do a, a similar ex uh, a similar experiment and um, we want to confirm that they're actually we're actually getting similar results to what they are uh, getting. So here's the plus that I would like to see. Uh, don't restrict, don't limit yourself to only those plots. If you feel that there are important ones, then just put them. So we want the pinch of uh, depth with the fruit number here. It's the square root of fruit number, as well as the pinch of time. Um, we want the volume here. They plot the volume of the um, of the air cavity, uh, but I will ask you to plot the jet volume as we have uh, talked about before, and you want to plot it against food number because the whole story behind uh, from our experiment is to look at scaling and scaling tells us what the important parameters in this problem are. So if fraud number is the important parameter and I use four different objects and then I discover that they that a single line can can predict the the behavior of those four objects and those uh, five drop heights across all of them across all 20 experiments which uh, these guys have done something similar. Uh, that they scale, then that means we have we we have discovered um, a scaling um, relationship, just like when we plotted Reynolds number 
when we plotted the drag coefficient versus Reynolds number for a sphere or for a cylinder. So we had a Stokes flow and then at high Reynolds number above 100 to 1000, we had sort of a steady uh, drag uh, coefficient. We had very high drag at low Reynolds number, but at higher at high Reynolds number, our drag became sort of constant. Our drag coefficient became constant until some later uh, time that we didn't have time to discuss, and it's beyond. Um, so the time is not perfect to uh, to do that in this lecture series. So we want to uh, plot those, um, and so the and we also want to see what the jet maximum jet time as well as the uh, jet height. So you've plotted the pinch time, pinch depth. Uh, you want the sphere maximum depth time as well as the sphere maximum depth, uh, Z jet, V jet, and tau jet. And we want to plot those versus um, fraud uh, number. So each one will have a fraud number because you can compute the fraud number for each one. And let's see if the if we can if their relationship predicts our our um, the behavior in our experiment. So you really want to go and read this paper. Um, the last thing I would like I would want to ask you to uh, to plot. Uh, you would require you to um, look at the analysis uh, in the theoretical model. And it's about the deceleration. Remember we talked about the sphere acceleration uh, when it hits the water, so it will lose, it's a negative acceleration, it's losing speed. And they model that over here, and it's all very clear. Um, Except one thing is extra is the added mass. Don't worry about it. It's just some extra force um, that we don't really need to worry about it. We will just take it as they they have it. So this CM, uh, everything else we know what it is. F is the fruit number. D is the density ratio. CD is the drag coefficient. CM is the added mass coefficient. We don't care about it. And let's just use whatever they use. They use CM of 0 0.25. Uh, we will stick uh, with that. And then based on this, they get a uh, the velocity as a function of depth of the sphere as well as its acceleration. So that's their model for acceleration. Um, so they have these constants A, B, and C. And we are interested in plotting this acceleration. So you're going to measure because you have your video, you can measure the uh, sphere acceleration from your video. And then uh, we will compare it to this, um, to the model, which is given in equation 10 in uh, the paper by um, Aristoff and uh, co-workers. It's a, this is a sort of quite a bit of work. Uh, so that's why I'm going to have four in a team. Uh, so each one of you will do an object, but you need to coordinate uh, between each other to, um, to be able to have your uh, results match. Because eventually you want to put the results from all four uh persons into into this uh, graphs from all four objects all five heights into uh the, at least five heights uh, be my guess to do more into this plot in all plots and see how your scaling uh works compared to the scaling in this paper so this is our um our experiment i'd like you again just as as you, as we have done before we want to have uh, a video, it's not, don't video everything, just have cutouts of the important highlights in your experiment, so do some editing to your video, and uh, don't do more than 
uh, two minutes um, so that we can uh, we can watch it um, so I'll, I can give it enough attention um, watching it then we want a report and in this report I'd really like you uh, to focus on the experiment and the results because that's what I am interested in so make your introduction extremely short your object so one paragraph uh, two paragraphs, no mass, no more. Uh, and then I would like you to focus on the quantitative details. I My sphere was two millimeters and the density as, a, as I um, could get it from Google from for wax, it was 0 0.66 and that gives me the volume. So I would like you to detail, to detail that very well in your uh, experimental procedure, how you conducted your experiment. If you found something that was very challenging, okay, I couldn't find the height of the jet very well just because the jet was um, was always skewed to one side. Uh, it didn't come out straight. My sphere wasn't actually a sphere. It was more like an egg and that that's what caused it. Discuss that. This is the stuff that I would like to uh, to talk about. Or if you found some innovative way or you come up with some innovative way, innovative procedure to do your experiment and to do your analysis. I would like to uh, read about that and uh, know about it. And I, the second thing that I want to see in your report is to uh, see sample video analysis and samples of screenshots of the image processing on, okay, this is my Tau pinch off. I want to see that where you got your pinch off time. Uh, so sample from those four, uh, experiment uh, from those 20 experiments I want to see maximum one or two uh, but I need to see them uh, then uh, you are then the important stuff is the plots that we just talked about we want to see all those plots in particular and it's including the acceleration term and how they compare um, to the theoretical model uh, and then for each one of those figures, I would like you to discuss them. Uh, have them captioned. I'm plotting the act theoretical acceleration versus the measured acceleration and it's in units of ABC or it's unitless because this is how we non-dimensionalize. This is the things, uh, these are the kind of things that I would be looking to, um, uh, to uh, be looking at when I'm looking at your report. Um, and then, what do what do you learn from all this? Um, and overall, uh, the overall experiment. So I would like to see that you have done a well detailed experiment. Well done. Not from not, you haven't winged it from the back of your hand. Good analysis and good results. And as usual, um, submit an Excel sheet uh, which has the appendix, which has the which has the data that you have taken in your experiment put your uh, headings of the columns as well as their um, units so this is our experiment uh, good luck with it and i will see you in the next lecture thank you for listening